got an example of a question here from 2005 where they've asked you at the bottom there to discuss the use of putting ear tags into little cows' ears to help with dealing with diseases. So you might make a table and on one side you'd have points for. So just quickly, um, you can tell where the calf has come from, the origin, the farm that it's come from. You could track all of its movements and you would know what other cattle it had been in contact with if it ends up having some disease. You have to find an against, even if there aren't many, such as maybe it's expensive to put tags in cow's ears or they could fall out. So if you do a quick table, you have done a discussion, you've set yourself up, then you can add some more notes afterwards. Another really common verb that you'll find in exams is compare. You're often asked to compare two different things and the very best way to do this, as always, is with a table. If you're asked to compare two things, you should always make three columns. If you're asked to compare five things, make six columns. Because the very first column should be the feature or the characteristic that you're going to compare. Remember it can be similarities as well as differences. This question here from the 2004 paper, they have made a table for you already, which is really useful. And all you need to do is fill in the gaps with the facts that you know. And you can see that they're going to line up because the table makes you go across from the feature, across the two columns. So, you're often also asked about impacts. That's a very common term. You should give positive and negative impacts. They've given you plural here. If you find you're running out of time, just use uh, tables, dot points, diagrams. No question ever says write everything you know about photosynthesis, so you have to try and narrow down exactly what they want from you. If you need more paper, you just put your hand up and you ask for another booklet. You can even get one just to do your rough working if you want to, so you can always get more paper. I've just chosen a very difficult question here from the 2005 paper just to show you how a table would really help you to answer all the parts of this question. If one side's talking about pesticide, one side's talking about fungus, you might think, well, my teacher never taught me about that. That's true, it's because it's a skills question and you'll often get um, data that you haven't seen before and it doesn't mean you haven't studied it, it means they want you to apply your knowledge. So if we have a look at what they're asking you to do, you have to assess. So we first of all look at the verb and we circle the verb. Assess, you remember, means to make a judgment. I often do that or make a space for that straight away. At the start, I either write, I'll leave a space for me to either write pesticide or fungus is the best option. So somewhere you have to make a judgment. Impacts is plural of both of these strategies on society and the environment. They're asking you to do a lot for five marks. So I would make a big table, because I love tables, and that will help me to structure my answer. So I have the strategies, there are two of them. One is pesticide, and one is fungus. And they want me to talk about the impacts, remember positive and negative, on the environment and on society. So looking through the information that they've given you in the question, immediate ones for society are that the costs are low. So if it's cheap, that's a benefit for society and that's for both of them. So we could say that it's cheap or costs are low, that's for both. If you think about some negatives on society of spraying pesticides everywhere, they're highly likely to be toxic to people or to animals. So for the pesticide, for society, it might be toxic to humans or get into our food chain. Uh, for the fungus, I can't really think of many negatives for that one. So maybe someone's allergic to it or something like that. You don't have to have one for all of them. 
And for the environment, you could say perhaps a positive effect is it does kill lo locusts. So they said it's an effective tool against locusts. But of course, like most pesticides, it probably also kills other native insects like bees and things that you don't want to kill. So very rarely does it only kill the target insect, often kills others as well. The fungus for the environment seems like a positive thing because it's a naturally occurring fungus, they tell us. So perhaps, therefore, it won't have an effect on other species, only on the locusts. So it's good that it's naturally occurring. So overall, when you set up your table, you could say, in my judgment, they've asked you to make a judgment to assess, the fungus seems like the better option or strategy. So from a lot of information, if you bring it down so it's simple, you can then make sure you've answered all the parts of the question.